Welcome back, everybody. Here's the ingredients for today's recipe. What do you think it could be? It's going to start with 450 grams of dark chocolate. Today we're using 60%. Be right back with that answer. Hey everyone, this is Chef Rice. I'm back here in my home kitchen. Today we're going to do another recipe from the Intro to Baking and Pastry class. Today we're making the traditional chocolate mousse. That's right, earlier I showed you we need 450 grams of chocolate to get started. So make sure that you get out your scales, you make sure you weigh everything and have everything proper. Follow the directions, follow along in this video. You should have a pretty good mousse at the very end. Follow along with me, see you in a few minutes. One of the key things that you need to make sure that you do is that you weigh out your chocolate properly. So go ahead and get your scale turned on and then whatever unit you're gonna to use to put on top of it to measure, make sure you use the tear function and put that on there. So we're gonna hit the tear function. And remember we need 450 grams. So right there is 375. 409, 449.5, and maybe I shouldn't have eaten that one little piece of chocolate a little bit ago. A couple of more pieces in there. 450 grams. Next thing, measure out your butter. We're gonna go with nine ounces or 270 grams. We are using unsalted butter. We need 270 grams. Currently in the container, I have 196 grams. So I'm gonna keep adding the unsalted butter till I have 270. That's 221 grams. We should be close with this last little bit here. 262 grams. And this should put us at 270 grams. 270 grams. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the chocolate and the butter and I'm gonna put it over a double boiler on the stove and slowly let it start melting while we get the rest of our ingredients ready to go into the mixer and start the process. Over here at my stove top now, we're getting ready to put in the chocolate, the 270 grams. So 450 grams of chocolate. And then we're going to add in the 270 grams of the unsalted butter. We're going to slowly let that go. Again, it's over a double boiler because we don't want it to burn. We just want it to slowly incorporate with itself. We'll start mixing that. But this will take a little bit of time. And meanwhile, we can go ahead and start working on our filling. Just want to get it completely melted down into there use your whisk get it all on the sides incorporate everything as best as you can a really beautiful look to this chocolate now again we're using 60 percent chocolate this is what we carry at the school you can use up to about 75 percent chocolate if you really want that rich dark chocolate taste that's really more what the french prefer Americans like a little bit sweeter, so, um, but we use 60% on our campus, so that's what I have currently. And as you can see, it's a beautiful ribbon right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn my stove off, let it stay here. We want it to get down to about 120 degrees for when we start to add in our egg yolks to it. Okay, for this next part, we need seven egg yolks. So egg yolks only. So we're gonna take the eggs and we're gonna separate. The whites fall into that container. The only thing we want is just that beautiful yolk. Add that yolk to there. Okay, so now that we have all seven of our egg yolks in there, we want to just make sure that they're broken up and they kind of blend together a little bit. So we're gonna add them a little bit at a time to our warm chocolate butter mixture over there. So just get the egg yolks all broken up. 
whipped up just a little bit. We saved the egg whites. We're actually gonna need 11 egg whites for our meringue that we're about to make. So we went ahead and saved the egg whites. I'll be getting some more egg whites added to that before we go into the mixer here in just a second. Right now we're about to put this with our chocolate mixture. I just put the chocolate mixture back on the stove to get it warming back up just a little bit. You want it at about 120 degrees before you start adding the yolks. And again, you wanna add slowly, you wanna temper, you wanna go slowly because you don't want the egg yolks to curdle when they're in the chocolate. Okay, so we're back over here at the stove. We're checking on our chocolate. And remember I said it needs to be at about 120 degrees. Earlier today I got my thermometer out and it was actually off, so I calibrated it. Remember from fundamentals, you learned how to calibrate. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna check to see if I'm near 120 degrees. If I am, then I'm gonna start incorporating all of my eggs. Okay, so now we're back up at 120 degrees. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna slowly add in some egg yolks. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off from underneath. Just want to slowly add in a little bit at a time. I know you can't see it in the video, but it's starting to really thicken up nice for me. So I'm just getting the last little bit in there. And if you notice, I didn't have any scrambled egg effect, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure we got all of the eggs incorporated, tempered into there without them scrambling. Because if you scramble them all, you gotta start all over. So the next part, we're gonna go back over to the mixer. We're gonna use all those 11 egg whites that we saved from earlier and we're going to add a, get those up to a soft peak we're going to add in some sugar and then we're going to come back over here to this mixture and we are going to get this one with the egg whites added to it okay so remember i said earlier 11 egg whites we have seven egg whites from before we need to go ahead and put in the rest of the egg whites now So for the next part, we're just gonna take our egg whites that we have separated, that's 11 egg, egg whites. We're gonna add it into our stand mixer. You can use a hand mixer if you have one at home. You can actually whisk by hand if you need to. Um, but we're gonna go to soft peaks before we start adding in the sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock my mixer, get it turned on, and just start adding my eggs. So meanwhile, while that's going on, I want to go ahead and get some sugar weighed out. I want to have 75 grams of sugar, so I have a ramekin. I'm actually going to use the ramekin later to put the sugar in. Put my ramekin on my scale, it's at zero. Tear it out, and then I'm going to add sugar until I get to 75 grams. Now if you have clumps or anything in your sugar, go ahead and break that up now. It makes it easier on you. Sometimes sugar sits in your cabinets or in your bins at the school and they start to get a little bit of moisture to them. Go ahead and break all of that up now. I can see my eggs are starting to come together in there. They're not, they're not quite to peaks yet. They're still liquidy. You can see how they're sloshing around a little bit, but they're starting to get a nice foam starting. I'm going to go ahead and turn the mixer up just one. I think I've got all of my clumps removed out of here now. I'm 
So as you can see deep in the mixer, we're starting to get a lot of foam build up in there. And that's where those peaks are starting to, to perform. That's forcing air down inside of the eggs and letting the eggs get a little bit of little thickness to them. A little, you're gonna look like little white clouds when we're done, if you haven't done soft peaks before. What we're looking for is when you barely touch it, it's gonna hold and then just fall back down. That's a soft peak. A stiff peak, we're gonna to wanna to pull it up and it's gonna to wanna to stay solid and not move. So we're looking for stiff, soft peaks right now. And now that we're getting a little bit further along, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up a little bit more. Go ahead and shut it off and take a peek at it real quick. So what I have right now is a soft peak. It's starting to fall back down relatively quick. See, it just falls down. That's a soft peak. I'm gonna go just a touch longer, but not much longer. Reincorporate a little bit there. As I know I've got a little bit of liquid on the bottom. I'll just go just a little bit longer. As you can see in the bowl, the volume of the egg is coming up significantly as that air is incorporated into the, into the egg. So let's give it another chance here and take a look at it. Beautiful, beautiful soft peaks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this same soft peak, make sure we're going to go back to about a medium speed, and then we're going to start adding in our sugar a little at a time. We'll add in a little bit over here. Add a little bit over here. This is what's gonna give us that beautiful sweetness in our chocolate mousse. And I'm gonna go ahead and just let it go for a little bit. So now we're going to go all the way to stiff peaks. Remember earlier I told you that a soft peak is when it's going to fall back down. Now we're looking for that stiff peak. We want the eggs and the sugar to come together and we want it to be able to stand on its own. Once it's able to stand on its own, we're going to take this and we're going to add that right into the chocolate mixture. Periodically, just go ahead and shut it down and go ahead and hit the sides of your bowl. Make sure everything is getting incorporated. We're getting beautiful. We're almost to the full stiff peak part here. Give it just another minute or so. You can see on the spatula how they're holding stiff. Okay, so let's take a peek at what it looks like. Okay, beautiful stiff peaks. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, take this off. I'll show you real quick how the stiff peaks, how they form, how they stay up beautifully. It's a meringue that we just made. And you can toast this meringue if you put it on top of banana puddings or on top of lemon meringue pies, things like that. You can hit it with a blowtorch, anything like that. Today we're gonna take this same meringue and we're just gonna incorporate it into the chocolate. So here's our chocolate egg mixture from earlier. We're just gonna 
take our meringue that we just finished and we're going to slowly start adding it in. Take the chocolate and get it all mixed in there. mixing it until all of our egg mixture has turned to the chocolate color. Continually scraping down the sides of our bowl, folding and folding and folding. We're not really whipping hard because we don't want all of our eggs to fall apart. We want to just fold it. So lifting and pushing down, lifting and pushing down. here. Just want to get this last little bit incorporated. Okay, for this next part, we're going to make our whipped cream that goes into our chocolate mousse as well. We're going to use eight fluid ounces, which is one cup. So we're going to do half a cup now. Go ahead and get that mixing. We're going to take this also to soft peaks. And then there's my other half cup. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it up a little couple notches and let it make our soft peaks for us. can start to see inside of the bowl it is getting to a point where it's starting to get frothy just like the eggs did. Should be about another minute or so and we should be near the stiff peaks. I'm going to go ahead and so soft peak, sorry. Go ahead and go all the way up. And it's going to be the same process with the whipped cream. We're going to want to add that whipped cream to our chocolate mixture and make sure that none of the um, whipped cream is showing that it's all completely looking like the chocolate mixture. So if you can see down in our bowl it's starting to look like we're getting close to a soft peak. Okay let's take a look real quick, unlock our bowl. It's just shy of being at a soft peak so let's go ahead and go back. Remember at a soft peak, you'll be able to bring it up and then it'll start to go down immediately on its own. So if we take a look, we're at a beautiful little soft peak here. Go ahead and knock this off. Put that in the sink. And then we'll begin incorporating the whipped cream with no sugar in it into our chocolate mixture. Now you can make a whipped cream for yourself to put on top as a topping for later, or you can add strawberries, you can add a few different things to it, but this is the basics of the mousse right here. What it needs to do now is just chill for a few hours, and then we'll be able to spoon it or pipe it into some glasses. And we're almost fully incorporated. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to give it a quick test and make sure that the flavor profiles are right before I put it away in the refrigerator. Alright, 
looks like everything is nice and smooth, velvety smooth all the way through. Nice, beautiful mousse here. I'm gonna grab a spoon real quick. Give it a try. Beautiful chocolate mousse. Only thing it needs now is to chill in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. Then I'll start incorporating it into both a ramekin and into a wine glass to show a couple of different techniques on finishing. Okay, everybody, I'm back. You can see I've gone ahead and piped one of the one of them into here. Chocolate mousse is holding up beautifully. I also went ahead and made a parfait. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, chocolate mousse, whipped cream, a little bit of strawberry on top. All I did is I just took a piping bag with a large star tip in it. It's a piping bag, large star tip. And then I just filled the cup up all the way around. And once you're at this point, you can do a couple of different things. You can add a mint leaf, you can add chocolate shavings, you can do anything that you really want. Strawberries, berries of any kind, you can serve it just like this. Um, you can take chocolate chip shavings. I just took a whole bunch of our chocolate chips and shaved them down and we can use those on the top. So as you can see, there's many different ways. This one has the chocolate chip shavings. This one's by itself, parfait, and then let's just fill the glass with chocolate. Gotta get some more. So here we're just gonna go ahead and fill the rest of the glass up all the way. And again, you can put whipped cream, you can put mint, berries, you can serve it as is. Um, I do recommend every time you go to serve it that you go ahead and put it in the cooler. Let it be nice and cool. Um, between, I would say, 50 and 45 degrees is probably the best temperature to serve it at. You don't want it too cold because then it becomes really stiff. You don't want it too hot because then it starts to be runny. Well, for today, this is Chef Rice and my chocolate mousse saying see you next time. Hope to see you at school real soon.